I had never heard of Jay Ward before. My agent called and said, you know, there's a fellow in town who wants to do a series, and he has an idea, and he wants to take you to lunch. By this time, I guess I was well known because I had been doing all the Warner Brothers and Disney films. And so we met at the Tail of the Cock, which was a lovely restaurant on La, La Cienega Boulevard uh, in West Los Angeles. And so I arrived at the Tail of the Cock, and uh, there were two men sitting at the table. The Metro D brought us over, brought me over to the table, and uh, I, I saw this very congenial man with glasses and um, uh, a handlebar mustache and a taller man, very genial, and they were Jay Ward and Bill Scott, and they were having martinis. And uh, they said, have a martini, and I said, no, I, I, I really don't drink at noon. I, you know, I'd rather not. And they started telling me about the idea of a moose and a squirrel, and I thought the idea was kind of cockeyed. They were the only anthropomorphic animals who were talking to real people. And so they said, oh, come on, have a martini. Well, after the first martini, I thought, you know, it's not such a bad idea. After the second one, I thought it was absolutely sensational, which it turned out was. But um, we did uh, a demo the following week, and he said, you're Rocky the Squirrel. And I said, well, what kind of a voice do you want? He said, well, an all-American Boy Scout squirrel. So that's what I did with a little hubris, and sometimes he became a little bit petulant with uh, Bullwinkle, but always doing well. He, he wanted to save the world, and so did, so did Bullwinkle. So I said, well, what about Natasha the spy? And they said, don't do Russian. Do her continental accent, because we don't want no problems with Russia. This was during the Cold War. So I did sort of a continental accent for Natasha. And uh, Boris was the same way. They are from Pennsylvania, not Russia, darling. Oh, the recording sessions were absolutely wonderful. As a matter of fact, they were so much fun. We, we arrived at the scheduled time laugh and we laughed, we told jokes, we kidded each other, and recording was almost incidental. We were having such good fun. And each segment was like three minutes and 10 seconds, something like that. The only time we had ever had to re-record and take it from the top was if we, uh, if we started to laugh or maybe were two seconds over time. Most of the times it's because we laughed. But it was fun. It was wonderful working with uh, Edward Everett Horton. Uh, here, here was a stage and screen man, and you wouldn't expect him to pick up a script right away and record it, but that's what he did. And I, it, it took, we would do six in one night, six Dudley Do-Rights or six Rockin' Bullwinkles or six Fractured Fairy Tales. And um, Edward Everett, after uh, we recorded six, He'd say, well, I got to go play tennis. And here was a man over 70, I think, when he started to do it. Paul Fries was one of the greatest voiceover actors. Well, he, he did a lot of on-screen things, too. He could impersonate anybody. He, was, uh, he did Boris. He did Inspector Fenwick. He did one of the uh, Moon Men. I don't know whether it was Gidney or Cloyd. They, even they were mixed up about that. Um, Bill Scott, who was the head writer, who wrote all the funny puns on the end. Uh, Bill Scott was a talented uh, actor. And when we did the demo, uh, Paul Fries, Bill Scott, and Jay were there, and I. And, um, uh, Jay had said to Paul, well, you're doing Boris and some of the other characters, and June, you're doing Rocky and Natasha. And, and Bill Scott said, well, who's going to be Bullwinkle? And Jay said, well, you are, because apparently uh, Bill had written all of the, uh, the, the Bullwinkle scripts, plus the puns, 
and he used this funny uh, voice like that. And so uh, he was surprised that he was going to do Bullwinkle, but Jay just took it for granted. Uh, Bill Conrad was uh, a marvelous uh, actor with this great diapason of a voice, you know. And when he, the first recording session, he would say, and now Rocky and Bullwinkle. And Jay would say, you got to go faster, Bill. And he'd go faster. And every time he went a little bit faster, he went a little bit higher. And uh, he said to Jay, you know, I sound hysterical when I do that. And Jay said, that's precisely what I want. So he, he was great in that. Um, Dawes Butler was always in the Fractured Fairy Tales and Aesop's Fables. And uh, he did uh, crazy uh, princess uh, voices and the kings, and, and uh, uh, they, were, they were very different. He, also a very talented man. He worked at Hanna-Barbera and did a lot of the, uh, uh, the uh, I, I can't remember all the characters, but he did. He was a staple at Hanna-Barbera. And um, they, they were all just wonderful actors. I love Jay. He, he, he was a marvelous character himself. He never directed anybody. Uh, he was always jolly, uh, but he was very firm in what he liked. If, uh, if it wasn't clever enough, uh, he'd say, cut it. We, we won't do that. He was the final uh, analyst on everything and determination. Uh, he, he was wonderful. Always laughing, always jolly, and uh, it, was, it was a pleasure. Ne he never directed any of us. He just sat in the control room and said, okay, after we laughed and joked, he said, okay, let's record. Recording was almost incidental. In the first place, they're not topical. Uh, they're, they're still topical. Uh, they, they are not dated in any way. Uh, they were brilliantly written, mordantly witty, and uh, we offended everybody, but al always in a very nice way. I remember once um, Captain Peter Peachfuzz, who, who was pretty stupid, <laughs> uh, was flying a plane, and he said, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, Rocky and Bullwinkle, but we don't have any fuel left. We're going to crash. And all of a sudden, there is a, a podium, and uh, there was a big book on it. And Rocky would say, Hokey smoke, I'm looking at the congressional record. There's enough gas here to go around the world. Well, that was funny, but it, it wasn't mean. And I think, I think congressmen and senators would, would laugh at it, and they did. None of the episodes was lesser than the other because they were all so brilliant. I, I, I really couldn't say which is better than the other. They were all the same. They, they had the same humor, the sophistication. So uh, they, they were all equal. They were funny as the devil. Yeah, hokey smoke. Uh, Rocky was uh, always dauntless, always ready to save the world. And sometimes he became a little impatient with Bullwinkle, but uh, he loved him and they got along pretty well. And of course, Natasha loved Boris. They were the no good nicks, but uh, they were harmless. They were so stupid, you know. They were hoist by their own petard, I would say. Uh, they were they were evil, but they 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 always got their just desserts, and dessert was very sweet.